All right. Hello and welcome everyone to today's uh, Our Hometown uh, Monday Office Hours, where uh, every week we sit down and talk about WordPress, different tips and tricks, uh, different ways to get the most out of your website. I'm your host, Matt Larson, and coming to you from Salt Lake City. Let's see. Uh, and today, uh, I'm going to kick it off here with uh, a couple top stories from our uh, blog. Um, sorry about any background noise we have right now. <laughs> Just started right after I started the call. Um, okay. And so we got Vera and Terry on the call. Can you guys both hear me? I can hear you. Okay, cool. I can hear you. I, all right. Good morning, you both. Uh, East Coasters. So um, thanks for calling in. Uh, I just wanted to kick it off here uh, before we get to the main topic, which is uh, scheduling articles and PDFs to publish in the future. We're going to just go through that. It's a real quick tutorial today. Um, I just want to update everyone with uh, some of the latest from the blog. Every week, we're going to be republishing this office hours on uh, the blog the following Tuesday. So last week, we did the customized tool recap, uh, and here's the full video for that. So you can watch it if you ever miss an office hours and you want to uh, go back or you want to re-listen. They're all going to be on the blog. Um, another... Uh, News story from last week. Uh, this was really exciting news. Our first virtual conference of the month and uh, the first of a series of conferences leading up to the NNA convention. But uh, last week we did uh, producing high yield video content with live uh, video interviews. And uh, it was a really fun discussion. Um, took about a half hour or so. We're going to be publishing that full uh, video tomorrow and sending it out in the newsletter too. So uh, check that out. Okay, the next conference that we've got coming up two weeks uh, from last Friday. So on the 21st of August, we're going to be talking about paywall models for print newspapers. And this is another topic that I'll be discussing at the NNA in October. So this is just kind of a preview discussion. Uh, we'll be talking about Actually, we covered this in office hours recently, but we'll be going into more uh, case studies here uh, on hard paywalls, soft paywalls, meters, registration walls. Uh, this one's going to be geared towards paid print newspapers. We'll have a sep separate one for free. And then, uh, again, just want to keep plugging this. The NNA convention's having uh, their virtual conference October 1st through the 3rd. We'll be uh, giving four sessions there. Um, all of these are going to be covered in our virtual conference uh, series as well, except for the donation strategy. We've actually already covered that one. So, um, but if you register for NNA, uh, you know you're going to have access to dozens of other uh, virtual presentations, uh, some really interesting topics on the agenda. So I hope you'll consider uh, signing up for the NNA convention this year. It's a lot easier to attend um, than it has been. So I hope they get a good turnout for it this year. Um, you know, with just so many members, I think over the years have been dropping off attending conferences because it's just so expensive to travel and take the time off. So um, they're they're following the virtual trend. Okay, so let's get back to the main topic for today's office hours, which is scheduling articles and PDFs to publish in the future. And uh, this blog post, I reviewed it earlier, and it actually shows us the way to do it. Um, these screenshots are from the block editor, which I do want to cover. But let's first talk about um, the classic default editor and how we can schedule an article to go live on that. So. For this part, I want to pass it over to Vera to become a presenter and take us through this. You ready, Vera? I am. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. So um, just 
you know, kind of as an overview. And uh, I think I'm going to just remove my camera so, so we focus on that. One of the many benefits of our hometown's WordPress platform is that newspapers can schedule articles and PDFs to go live at any time in the future. So there's never any need for you to wake up early and manually update the website with the day's new content. Uh, instead, your staff can just prepare the entire edition's worth of stories and PDFs throughout the week and schedule them to go live uh, at a specific time of day. Let me try switching over. I don't know. How is the audio for you guys? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. All right. Yeah, there's uh, a truck outside my window right now, so I don't know how much that's getting in the way. Um, anyway, so scheduling an article or PDF is easy. You just basically go to the publish box on an article. So let's let's navigate to, uh, yeah, we can go to an existing article. Oh, we don't have any, so we, we'll just create a brand new one. That's all right. So when you say add new, it's gonna open up the classic editor, which looks like this. This is the default view. And so the publish box is right over there on the right column. And so, yes, you do need to give it a category, but, um, if we just want to you know, focus on the publish options, then it's pretty much just default, it's gonna go immediately. That's one thing to note. So if you hit save or publish, it'll be live. But you can schedule it to go live in the future. I guess you could also set that date in the past if you wanted to, but then it would just go live immediately, but it would be time stamped in the past so as if it went live then. Um, One thing on categories, eEdition is only used for PDFs. Check, right. on, check on news, just the news category. That's probably set up on the site. Good. Right. Okay. So, yeah, we'll publish this immediately, but you can clearly see uh, that you can schedule it for any time down to the second. Um, right now, it has a status of draft, but if we hit publish, it would change it to published, but we could also just update the status, right? So this is something I wanted to point out for people doing uh, reverse publishing on the platform. They can use the status uh, drop down. So if you click the edit button next to uh, draft there, so you just saved it as a draft, so that's, that's good, uh, but we can change the status. And it's really only got, two statuses by default, but we can add any um, custom statuses that you want. So like if you were using this for reverse publishing, maybe one status would be, you know, ready for editor's review or something like that. Um, but even using these two, we could change it to pending review. But these are basically two different statuses for non-published articles. So they're, they're just different levels of drafts that you can have. Um, I guess I just I like to point that out because all of this really is tied very closely to reverse publishing. And I actually want to read um, a note from Meg Norris. She pointed something out um, about this scheduling system, but we'll get to that in a second. So we've got it as a draft. Um, what else should I point out here? Yeah, I mean, there's not really much else to it. I mean, do you, we, we want to just go over to the e-edition, the PDFs, and just show that area. It's the exact same area. Um, still going to use the publish button. It's up a little bit. I think it was just below where you were. There you go. So if you – oh, yeah, you can just – Actually, we can just exit this. We don't need to save it or anything. Okay. That it, that thing that was just happening, it was forcing you to s put it in an edition just for the archives. Okay, when we're creating a PDF, though, it's going to be very similar. You go look for your blue outline button to create something. And then, yeah, it's got the exact same published box. So... I think a lot of people use this, correct me if I'm wrong, Terry, for basically like embargoing the print edition, well, the e-edition, so it doesn't go out before the print. That's like the main application. 
Um, that's actually how Meg Norris does it, I think. Right. Yep. She, yeah, she wants to kind of preserve the uh, newsiness of the print edition, I guess. So, okay, so you would set the the time to publish. You never really need to change the visibility, right? I mean, that he actually mentions in his blog post, uh, Jack's blog post, that um, you won't often want to change the visibility. He doesn't even mention why you would want to change that. Do you know what? what that would be let's take a look at those options here edit so you can make it private beyond the paywall i think so it's this is not having to do with the paywall this is just you can make it password protected that's i think that's what this is am i right about that because we're talking yeah. we're looking on the article level it's not even it's outside right. of member press i think one application would be um maybe an advertiser if you're using something that only you only want advertisers to see like maybe a special offer and you send them the password to see a specific right. article so that the article is only visible if the person has the password right yeah yeah i can't think of many examples of where i've actually seen this used but that makes sense and we've used it uh, for developing features like on the acorn site the classified section that we're working on is password protected. So I think that's, this is how that's done. If you could click on password protected there, just let me see, I think it's probably gonna, okay, so you just said the password right there. Or it could be private, which basically means it's not published on the site, but it's in the CMS. Um, I would think that would be used so that only the author of the article would be able to see it. That's interesting. Okay. They would be able to see it as if it was published on the site. But. Yeah, I don't but, know really what the purpose of that is. I mean, right. I really don't want the rest of the staff to see it for some reason. Right, right. Well, I mean, it might be. Yeah. Yeah, that might be it. Um, I wonder if we could just test this really quick. Could you just say okay, just say private. I think the okay above that is what you want. And then okay, publish immediately. And then you're updating it. It's privately published now. That's kind of, I've never actually done this. So now if I go on my end to the home page, yeah, click on the article. Did you end up uh, putting this in a category? on the home page yeah, there's there's nothing oh. there if, if you highlight right right wait a second oh. <laughs> that's okay we didn't give it a title or anything let's just give it a test title this is good see now i'm learning some if we could put it in the like featured story section or something well this is a e edition we're in pdfs right now oh sorry yep okay so um So yeah, you're gonna need, do you happen to have a PDF file? Cause if you don't have something handy, we could just do this with an article, the same test. There we go, perfect. I didn't set it, I'm sorry. That's okay. All right. So we should be able to update it now that it has content. Okay, stop. Okay. This is what I wanted you to stop before. If you hold your mouse, the left mouse button down, like you're gonna copy something and drag it all the way over in that very top, no, no, right there. Okay, hold your left button down and drag it over the very top left corner of that black box. And you'll see something is printed there. Nope. Right there. Okay, that means there's nothing there. Okay, so if you arrow back, that you can't see that on that black screen, but it's there. That's why I wanted you to highlight it. Right, so, let's try turning it. So is that because it was set to private? Well, I don't think there's a file in there. there oh. we go. That's what we need to see. 
And that's an important step when you're doing PDFs is you have to save your draft first with an addition date before it will let you drop any PDFs in there. Right. Okay. So now this is interesting because only Vera should be able to see this, right? Because we for right. Private. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing something on the home page now. That's new. Okay, there's that. And then it gave me paywall options here. Do you I leave those alone or mark it as free? Nope. nope just leave those alone. We should be able to, okay. like, if Matt or I go to the site, we shouldn't be able to see that, right? Because it's yeah, I marked private. it private. Let's check this out. No, nope, I see it. So that there goes that, Terry. We'll have to look into that. See what that private is for. Do you see it, Matt? I, I see it. It's in under latest editions, and it actually says private test title. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, right. You know, we're logged in as admin. I wonder if this shows up. Nope, oh. it doesn't show up if you're not logged in as admin. So oh, that solves it. Show up if you're logged in as admin. But I wonder. Okay, I, I caught something. When I marked it private, you got that. Uh, little bar where you wanted me to highlight that there was no content showing the pdf was there sure. but but i couldn't see it because it was marked private the minute i unchecked it i can see what i uploaded so now i don't it's know if that makes a difference not private now no it's not private well, it's, no it wasn't there because there was no pdf loaded that's why it oh no i just there. did it i just did it watch I'm going to mark it uh, let's go back. private. Yeah, mark it private again and let's see what happens. Oh, what? I see. Okay. See? Oh, <laughs> Nobody can see it. Thumbnail. Yeah, so it's just a dead end. Okay, that's interesting. So yeah. That, I mean, that's a, because that means even you can't see it. But right. You know, that's there. a little weird. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's not that useful. I mean, it, it's. Because you know it's there. Right. Right. It is a way to store. I mean, it's it's going to still be in the even right. when it's well, private. It's going to be in the list. Change it back to private again, Vera. I want to see if it shows up on the dashboard under PDFs. Right. We need to double okay. check that. I would assume it's going to be there, but well, yeah. let's go to PDFs. <laughs> right. Yeah. Go to all PDFs. Let's see if it's in that list. And it's oh. just marked as private. But you yeah. can't hover over that. Let's see. Oh, well, you'd be able to edit, but we wouldn't be able to. Let me right. see. I wonder if you can see it, man. Well, well, we're all logged in as ops, I think, right? So yeah. Uh, we would to really test it, we would need to create a new user and see if they can see it. But right. um, that's that's kind of going off on a tangent, but that's yeah. interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, no, that, that's cool. No, that's what. I like to dig into that stuff. So let's um, let's take a quick uh, another look at this through the block editor. Okay. So I just want to. I mean, I know you guys have looked at this, but I don't know how much you really work with it. And um, I think we do want to always talk about you know the block editor whenever we're talking about articles. So let's go up to add new. Again, just create a brand new article. Uh, yeah, we're going to go to articles. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and actually, I'd like you to just go to all articles first because we need to be here in order to do this. Now, the add new button has a drop down next to it. So click that and then say block editor. 
And again, this is what Jack really highlighted on the blog post anyway. So um, you can just exit out of this. It's a overview. Um, and basically now the scheduling tool is under what's called document. You have document on the right there and then block. So, um, you know, block is for the different things that you place on the page, but there's nothing there now. But we could just say, you know, could put in a quick title, just like, you know, another test title number two or something or block test. Um, ah, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So that is just like your, your headline. And I like the block editor because you're writing it in there just like it's going to show up on the page. I mean, it's really like you're writing it. It's not you're writing in a text block and then it's going to turn a pit you know get a page out of that this is very realistic and yeah so this is a test and let's add um underneath that let's see how we add another block so you're done typing can you kind of click out of that yeah and click below it should be like right below the that box there should be um no no sorry up again like right below that box where you're just typing, put your cursor. Now where, yeah, where do we add other blo blocks? There should be a way to. There's a little plus button up in the top left. It's in the top left. Okay, that's how you got to start it off. Okay. Usually there's a block, there's a plus on the page too, but let's just add a picture, an image. Okay, now that we've started adding blocks, now I think you have that plus underneath. Maybe that's what you needed. So yeah, just grab any picture if you have something, or you could use the media library, actually. You don't need to find it. You can just use the media library. Um, yeah. So we really don't have much on this site. That's weird. There should have been more pictures on there, but that's okay. Then um, now you've got the plus button. So add that, add another block underneath it for paragraph again. And then you can just say, you know, this is the body of the article. So that's a quick demonstration of the block editor. And okay, so now we've got an article. Let's get this on the site. So if we go back to document, um, oh. Yep, you could just publish it immediately, or we could, um, so it's been published, we could go back to document and just do the scheduling there too. So it's already been published, but we could adjust that at any time and set it in the future, and then it would unpublish it for five minutes, yep, and then it would republish it. So you just have to say update, perfect. Now this one has some different functions I noticed when I was playing around with it earlier. Like you can just check the box for pending review. That's kind of like its own separate thing. But you've also got, uh, where is it? The status, I guess it's under, it, it's up. No, it, it's not down there. It's um, up where you were. Um, Visibility. I think if you click on public, oh, there's there's the private and password. So that's how that looks here. So that's not it. Uh, click off of that for a second. Publish. Um, oh, you got you have to switch to draft. So go out to the top and switch back to draft next to preview there to the left. Okay, and now that it's a draft, go back to your document. And let's see here, we should be able to, that's weird, I you don't have the same thing that I had. If you click pending review, um, see how it's changed to save as pending? I could, you can go up there and click that, save as pending. See, it's, I kind of had this issue earlier and it was, I thought I had it figured out, but um, 
it's acting a little differently than I expected. Um, now, wait a second. This is an article, right? We're, yeah, we're definitely creating an article, not a post. Let me open up my own block editor and just check this out because it looked a little different. Hmm. Yeah, what I'm basically looking for is the statuses that we saw on the classic editor. We had the ability to set it as pending review or as a draft, um, but now I don't see that option uh, for some reason. That's weird. Um, author. I think maybe I was on a different demo site, but it shouldn't make a difference. Let me see here. If I go into Let me try to edit this article on my other WordPress site. Oh yeah, no, what it was called was extended post statuses. Yeah, this, we need to figure out what is going on here. Um, Cause that's different on these two sites. Let me try to just create a brand new article on my demo site and see if I can get it. Whoops. Did you want me to pass back control to you, Matt? Um, yeah, sure. I, I mean, I can show you what I was, yeah, I can show you what I found here. Okay, we. this is actually not bad. So what we can do, let's mark down the time here. Um, did you set? Let me see if I can just set myself to be the presenter. Yeah, uh, screen two. Okay, so we're about a half hour in. So can one of you just, you know, make a note that we need to um, pick up, cut the video at this point and uh, have Steve cut it here. And the rest, the next few minutes, we're gonna need a clip of this to send to ops. So here, this is what I'm looking at. On my WordPress demo site, uh, which is sometimes a little out of sync with other sites, which kind of makes me wonder about this. It has this option to set an extended post status. And it has all these different options here. Um, I can also just click pending review and then it sets the extended post status to pending review. But um, when this is all saved and I have a title, assuming I have a title and some content, then it allows me to save it as pending. And it's now saved as pending and uh, looks like it's it's also published and, and it's it's live right now. So it's it's just a little, I don't know if this is working quite the way it should, basically. If I save it as a draft, it shouldn't say that it's published at 1.30, you know? Um, but then there's this other problem of the fact that I don't even have the extended uh, post status on this demo site. So I guess this is basically the question that I have for James, so I'm just going to take screenshots of this. We probably don't even need the video, but just to show him these two different document uh, areas of the block editor, we need to work that out because, you know, um, Mexico and anyone using reverse publishing is going to need the extended post status on uh, the block editor if they're ever going to use it. So, all right, that's a good catch. So, um, that's it. I mean, the, we pretty much covered the topic very quickly by just showing you where you can set the publish date. It's pretty much the same thing on both editors. And uh, 
then for the um, PDF editor, that's that hasn't changed with the block editor. So that shouldn't be any different. Um, okay, well, that's a good little bug that we found there. So um, I'll just create a ticket for that and uh, get to the bottom of it. But um, this is good. I mean, this is the type of stuff that we need to uncover as more people are hopefully using block editor. I don't think people really are using it yet. So these um, things are not getting found, you know. But um, I, I, then again, I don't think many people use uh, the different statuses. Like most of the time, an article is either live or a draft. <laughs> like that's pretty much it, the extent of it. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much all that I had for today. Anything else you guys want to point out? Um, I guess the one one other thing um, before I forget is this letter from Meg Norris where she saw our blog post last week and wanted to point out she uses this scheduling every week and um, she does reverse publishing so she, but she also wants to control the order that the articles show up on the home page and she used to give them slightly different publication times to do that right because everything's chronological so if you want if you're scheduling out five new articles, the one you want at the top of the home page, you know, or the first one in the featured stories slider, you would need to publish that one like one minute later than all the others, right? Right. So um, what she came up with instead, um, a better way to do this is uh, the menu item for articles. There's a sub menu for or order display of articles. So let's take a look at this. Uh, yeah, there's actually two ways to go about this. Okay. And I think her focus was on um, how her articles are displayed in her newsletter. Right? Did oh. she mention? So Did she? Okay. Yes. Yeah, if you go to if you go to the home page, is there anything on this home page? Uh, yeah, there is some stuff. Um. Okay, perfect. So, see that little edit order? Right. Okay, this is one way that you can edit the order. Right, and so what this is going to do, if she wants this article at the top, right, it would it change the date. It changes the date, basically, right? Changes the publish time, yep. Yeah, so it's it's kind of automatically doing what she was doing manually, like she was setting the time slightly different. But these are all on February 13th, so whatever minute this was published now, right. this one is published one minute after. Yep. <clears throat> okay, cool. Exactly. That's one way to do it. And then the other way is like she was describing going into... Um, right. Right. Look at this. This is cool. Then they can just go right down the widgets yep. and just set them all. This is perfect. Yep. Um, I guess the one thing to keep in mind, does this ever come up when people, if they change the time on this one and then it affects the order, if that article's in multiple widgets, then do they ever run into, you ever get people saying like, oh, you know, I can't get these both the way I want them? Yes. It, it, so what we always have to discuss is creating a duplicate of that article. Yeah, right, right. That's that's interesting. Yep. Yeah, that's, so that, that could be an category. issue. Well, right. it's not really because we do have a duplicate post option. Right. I don't know if activated because you can just duplicate it and have one article in news and one article in sports. They're the same right. article, but right. that gives you control over scheduling the time like right here. Right, right. Yeah, definitely. No, I think even it's just maybe a little bit of a game of whack-a-mole <laughs> to a certain yeah. extent, but you, you could probably drag it and then just go back and forth between the sections and, you know, get it set up so that everything that you want shows up uh, more or less. I don't know. As long as there's not too many, if there's like one shared article, then you could probably make that work. But if you have multiple, it, yeah, it might get a little messy. So you could come in here to articles. This one, I actually don't know. Is this, 
I think it's uh, a custom option and I don't know how to turn it on, but wouldn't it normally be here to yeah. clone it? Yes, it would be right there. It's called duplicate post. You, I do you know, is there a way, can admin only do that or can the publisher no, change? No, it's a plugin that has to be activated. By gotcha. Admin. Okay, it's a plugin. All right. So that would be a question for ops. Sounds good. Um, okay, good thing to point out. Uh, let's see, anything else we want to cover today? I think that was good. We uncovered uh, some interesting uh, nuances there to the block editor. So um, we'll touch base uh, later in the week on the next topic. I think uh, Jack's putting that together tonight for the newsletter, but then we'll uh, have another follow up next Monday. All right? Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much, you both. I appreciate the time. We'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Bye. Bye.